What's up everybody, it's Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the Harden Volume 1 LS. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, but with all that being said, let's get into it. So after the success of the Harden Volume 1 as a basketball sneaker, Adidas decided to release a lifestyle version of the same sneaker. Because why not? <laughs> so jumping right into the sneaker. Here it is, the James Harden Volume 1 LS. Right off the bat, the first difference that you'll notice between the LS and the regular Volume 1 is that there's no longer that weird sort of strap or a shroud going over the toe box. On the original Volume 1, Adidas added a piece of leather or suede or some sort of stiffer material to add some durability to the toe box. And to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of that visually or performance wise. I felt like that part kind of dug into my toe. So I'm kind of glad to see it not here on the LS version. So since you no longer have that toe cover, now you're just left with the naked prime knit that was underneath the original version. And you know what? I think it looks so much cleaner that way. The entire upper is made up of this relatively thick black and white speckled prime knit. It's it's super breathable and I think more comfortable than the regular version, so I'm definitely into that. Moving back on the shoe, you have a couple strips of fuse overlay to reinforce the lace eyelets. On the medial side, that fuse overlay extends all the way down to the toe box. You've still got that burrito wrap tongue construction, which I'm kind of neither here nor there on. At the top of the tongue, you've got this piece of iridescent plastic in James Harden's logo. Something I found kind of interesting is that when you get both the sneakers on each one of these logos, there's a sticker that says over time the iridescent finish is going to rub off, which... I guess it's fine. Maybe they've had problems with people complaining about that. I mean, it's plastic with a finish on it, so of course it's gonna rub. I mean, that doesn't really bother me at all. It might bother some people, but I mean, it's plastic with a finish on it, so of course it's gonna rub. Design-wise, though, I kind of would have preferred like a silver or a gold, and also maybe mimicked on these three stripes too, because this iridescent just isn't really doing it for me. Inside the shoe, the ankle area is really well padded. It's definitely a comfortable sneaker. If you've tried the original volume ones, you pretty much know what you're getting yourself into with these guys. As for fit, I'd say go true to size. That's personally what fit me best. But as always, if you have the chance to try the shoe on first, definitely do that just to make sure it's the right fit for you. Moving back on the shoe, as I mentioned before, you've got these three iridescent stripes. On Adidas's website, they called out the Volume 1 as being the only sneaker in their line that had the three stripes branding on the heel. Um, I don't know why they felt the need to do that. That just doesn't matter to me, or I'm sure most people. Um, maybe, maybe Harden's really into that. I don't know. Moving down the shoe, you've got another pretty big change from the original Harden Volume 1, and that's the uncaged boost. Forgot to charge my battery. But back to it. On the original Volume 1, all of the boosts on the lateral side and some on the medial side were actually encased in TPU. This allows the shoe to be more stable when you're making quick cuts on the court. However, it kind of takes away from some of that cushiony, sort of cloud-like feel that you're used to from boost. And the reason the TPU cage is so useful when making cuts is because it encases the boost and prevents it from feeling unstable. And of course, because this is the lifestyle model, stability is not as important. So they were able to get rid of it and allow you to have a much more cushioned ride. To be honest though, I wasn't really blown away by the comfort of the boost. I much prefer Ultra Boost and even honestly in some cases NMDs. One thing I found that was kind of interesting about the boost is that I think they use the exact same boost cushion that they use on the regular model and the reason I think that is because if you notice around the boost where the cage used to be it's got this really dimpled sort of texture. However on the medial side in the portions where the boost was uncaged you have that regular texture that you have on all the other boost sneakers and actually there is this hard defined line right there where the TPU ended. I mean it makes total sense why they're doing that save money why create another mold when you don't have to I mean it's not really important it doesn't affect the shoe whatsoever it's just something that I noticed finally moving to the bottom of the shoe you've got this milky outsole with the original Harden volume 1 traction pattern the sole glows in the dark if you're into that and then finally rounding up the shoe you've got a TPU midfoot shank in black with white speckles it's kind of nice overall the Harden volume 1 LS is definitely a nice sneaker but it's not an incredible sneaker. I mean, to be honest, I'm not really blown away by it. It's kind of plain. I like that it's subtle, but I just don't feel like I really need this shoe. The Prime Knit Upper is super comfortable. The Boost is not bad. It's 140 bucks, so it won't break the bank. But I mean, honestly, like, I'd rather have a pair of Ultra Boosts or a pair of NMDs. I've never really loved lifestyle versions of basketball shoes. I think if you're gonna make a basketball shoe, make a great basketball shoe, and if it happens to look nice, then wear it off the court. But just the fact that they wanted to create a different version of the shoe, uh, I just feel like it's unnecessary. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice shoe, but I just don't see the need for it. If you're trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, they are widely available for retail, so you shouldn't have a hard time grabbing them. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look.
That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Harden Volume 1 LS and whether you're planning to grab one for yourself. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Seth Fowler if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me on all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.